Hey doing guys, welcome back. We're going to be going through a Q&A video for round three now. So I've got a, a bunch of questions here on the phone in the Discord group. So if you'd like to join that, there's a link down in the, in the description. We get a lot of the, the late mail quickly in there. Uh, we've got a bunch of different channels that you can you can chat fantasy with and, and get some and get some good responses because I know it can be hard to to get that on some of the, the big Facebook groups. So this is that, uh, that quick sort of feedback there and, and everyone's trying to help each other out, which is good. But you also get to be part of that people squad, uh, you know, constructing that and also get to ask some questions to me in that Discord group as well. So I'm going to start with the questions from CJ Jones and he's got here Tino to Cam Murray and Andrew Davey to Josh Schuster. Are they decent trades? And yes, mate, definitely decent trades. This this goes on with the video I just did previously about the mid-rangers and, and if you're going to trade some guys that aren't doing as well, obviously Davey's injured, but you're looking to bring in a keeper and a cash cow as your two options, and I think that's a that's a great one there. Murray's playing big minutes; he's got dual position. I think he's perfect to bring in. Uh, Crispy Bacon says, "Is trading Avrilo to Schuster on my emergency a sideways trade?" Uh, I don't think it's sideways, but I do think that Avrilo is a decent player to have as some cover on on the bench. For example, he covers the half position; he covers the center center position. He probably won't make us too much money in the next little bit. There's a chance that he does improve and starts running the ball, gets a few tackle bra tackle breaks, etc. But Schuster is going to be more of your money maker and your scorer. So you could bring Schuster in as a scorer. But is there anyone else in your team that you could uh, could trade out instead of Avrilo? That would be my call with that one. Uh, Lamb to Schuster, a good trade. Yeah, I think it is. I like. There's a chance that Lamb gets the odd 40 or 45. If you get some attacking stats, but I'm I'm seeing him as, as holding his price around that 440, and he's kind of an awkward price. He's not going to be a keeper. I think you know if you want to bring him in for a good cash cow, and I see Schuster as one of those guys, then that's completely fine with that one. All right, King Spence asks, who should I get rid of, Kenny or Jesse Bromwich? So you have both of them, and who for is the, is the question. So all right, Kenny and Jesse. I think you need to get rid of both of them, but let's have a Let's have a little look at um yeah let's go into all positions and and have a little look around around their price. So if we go to Jesse, what have we got here? We got four seventy two, and Kenny at five thirty five. So I think they're both you can get rid of both of them. So let's let's have some options around that five hundred odd mark. Uh, what do we got here? So Collins, people have been speaking about, but they do have Bradley coming back, who might take take some minutes off him. Uh, I don't think he's a, a perfect option there. Uh, Tupanua is a pretty decent option. I think he's going to score really well over the next you know, eight to ten weeks until Cordner comes back, and then he might move to the bench. But Tupanua is a really cool option for someone like that. He's going to score a lot better than what they were. Uh, Welsh, I wouldn't be deciding to bring him in. He's going to score around you know, close to that 50 mark, but doesn't have a lot of money to make and probably isn't a keeper at this stage. Uh, Morgan... He's doing okay, but I wouldn't bring him in. Same with the Karima. Uh, what else we got? See, it's kind of an awkward, an awkward price point around that five five hundred odd. My suggestion for me would probably be going straight down to a cash cow. You got O'Sullivan, you got Schuster this week. If you need a forward, then you have Alvaro, you have you know Liniu, you have these types of guys that I'd probably go for, and then you can use some cash. You know, to go up. If you wanted to trade both of them, you could go one down to a cash cow, and you can go one up to you know, if that if that nets you around you know, 150 200k, then you can go up to some guys in the middle here, and we may as well talk about a few of them now. In you know, you got Toto in the wing fullbacks. You got Adam Elliott, who I've spoken about a little bit, but I think we'll be getting that 80 minutes and has the mid and edge position locked down. I think he's going to be able to average around 50 to 55, which puts him a you know close to 100k undervalued, you know, 50 to 100k there. So he's a he's a decent option for anyone that. You know, you need the middle or an edge with, you know, Kenny and, and Jesse there. Arrow, I wouldn't be thinking about too much. I think he has a little bit less upside than some of those guys. You then have someone like Luke Keery who's doing really well and, and taking the bulk of the kick meters and, and a lot of the attacking plays for the Roosters. I don't expect him to do as well as he has, you know, being, you know, averaging 71. But somewhere in the 50s, I think, is a, a really cool option for him. And, and again, he's probably that, you know, 70 to 80k undervalued. Uh, Fogarty, I think, is going to be a good option as well. I think I can see him averaging in the mid 50s at least this year. Uh, you move up, you've got Hudson Young as an edge, an edge forward that 
that is playing really well. He won't score a try every week, but he should be someone that average in the mid fifties as well and be a keeper in the edge. Guys like Lucy Lailua is going to be good. Um, you can go right over. You got Mitch Barnett. He's someone we should uh, have a little bit of a talk about and and even pop him in up here. Uh, Mitch Barnett seven fourteen. All right, so he's got that's the same thing. Got the middle and the edge. Will he keep the goal kicking? That's going to be the question. He's scored really well these first two games. Got to try in the first one, and then just some really high base stats in the second one. We spoke about him in the past, and in his second row performances, he averages in sort of the mid mid forties. And if he if he gets the try, then he can get fifty plus. But you know, he's someone that that's scoring really well. If he has, if he keeps the kicking, then great. If he doesn't, then I'm not sure how he's um how he's going to go. Uh, but other than that. Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of guys. You got Murray. There's a lot of those keepers that I spoke about in that previous video that you could you could pick up, and that's probably a really good thing to do. Trade those two mid rangers for a keeper and, and a cash cow. Um, what else we got here? Trade out Davy for Schuster with 99k left. This is from Shaka Shaka Okay, I wonder if you guys should trade out Lamb for O'Sullivan or Moylan for O'Sullivan. I definitely think you should trade Moylan out before Lamb. But either way, it doesn't matter too much. I think you can, you know, you can give Lamb another crack, and he should, be, he could, you know, have a decent chance of scoring at a forty or something like that. Rastanesian asks, Yo, Jamie, wondering what your thoughts would be on trading Tino to Kiri and Lamb to Schuster this round. And I'm okay with that. Again, you're trading in a keeper and a cash cow for two guys that are, you know, in that middle, and, and we're not sure how they're going to go. Um. Okay. Another cool question from uh, Josh DP Wright. Currently, Mahavs are Brooks and Lamb. Have 280k cash left over. Was originally going to trade out Tino and Lamb for Cleary plus a cash cow. Yeah, done. If he's if he's playing, do it. If not, wait for, wait until next week. Um, what else we got? From Kanana. What's your thoughts on Wade Egan? Yeah, look, he, he scored pretty well this second game and... Probably one, probably a score that I don't think he's going to get regularly, but it was really cool to see him get 80 minutes, and there's a chance he goes back to that 50-odd to 60 minutes again. But if he gets 80 minutes, he's going to score well. I just think for at 467k, there's you know other there's other cheaper options that could score pretty similarly, and we're not sure on his minutes, so I'd, I'd say try to steer clear of him. More on my bench, should I trade for Schuster or Alvaro from last ones? And I think for this one, just whichever position your team needs more. Schuster's a bit cheaper, but you know, might only get three games on the in the starting side, whereas Alvaro's got that, you know, sort of bench forty minutes locked up and should do well. Kalen Hobo, twenty five. I've got a you know, having a bunch of questions on Verils for some reason. He's not even playing yet. So <laughs> um think about him when he's playing, but if he's off of the bench he's not gonna be worth it. He needs a, a full time starting gig to, to score really well. Da -da -da. From D Milo 18 is Isaiah Papali'i a top buy, averaging 58 and now getting a starting edge role, replacing Madison. Possible tries against the Sharks team. Yeah, um, just one thing. Don't when you th when you're thinking about these guys, don't go. Oh, yep, they're playing this team this week. Um, work out Isaiah Papali. Um, he's playing against this exact team. I'm going to bring him in just for you know because I think he'll score well this round. If you're bringing in Papa Lee, you bring him in as a keeper. Okay, you want him to get up in the 700 Ks and average around in in the mid 50s and and score well. And if he if he keeps his edge spot for for more than a few weeks, and if he gets to what is it round six or round five when they redo the break evens, uh, break evens, redo the uh, dual positions, he could get that. But for me, I think he's going to average around the 50 mark. Yes, it's a little bit all speculation. He's played some time in the second row in the past for 80 minutes and got a 47, a 38. 31 in 60 minutes, 66 with a try, 34 in 70 minutes, right? So there's not a lot of incredible scores, 52 in 80. But that's in, in games where he wasn't really running the ball. And and that's my worry for him on the edge is, is, is he going to run the ball as much as he did in these first couple of games? The good thing I'll say with him is that in that in that round one, he had less tackles and a lot more run meters when they had the ball a bit more. In the second game, he made more tackles and had less, less run meters. So it's really cool to see those type of players that, can adapt to the playing conditions. So if there's a game that, that they're defending a lot, he's happy to get in and do the, the hard yards. But if they're attacking and, and having the ball a lot, then he can make a lot of run meters. So he's someone I think that could average around around 50 for the season. 
and you know if he's averaging around 50 he's about 120k underpriced but i expect him to head back to the bench once once it's all said and done and i think you know he's, he's a touch and go if you really like him as a player then i think you can bring him in but there's a bunch of other options that are a little bit more expensive that i think have uh better job security more chance of playing 80 minutes like an elliot uh, josh jackson these types of guys so he's interesting but not someone I would go for personally. All right. Yeah, so a question from Iron Will. Sirenum returns in round six from his knees. Justin Schuster drops back to the bench at that time. Um, uh, Tanua Brown returns from suspension in round six, meaning Bunty Foe was starting prop, same length of time. Schuster starting second row. There's a 40k difference, but do you agree a Foe could have similar, if not more, upside than Schuster? No, I don't think so. I don't see a Foe playing big minutes. So, I see him playing maybe slightly more minutes than what he's getting on the bench at the moment for the Warriors. But with Schuster, he's, as we said, touted to be one of those young guns and he could get those three weeks, but then he could take over Josefsky. He's Yes, he's a 5'8", but he's a Wade Graham style player in that he's big and strong. He's 105, 106 kilos, um, good with the ball. So, you know, if they, I think for Manly, if they're serious or doing really well, then then they just move him over to Josefsky's edge, or they keep him on the left, right? Um, Sirinan's a right edge player, so Sirinan could come if if Schuster plays well, which I think we, which I think he will, he will he should be able to keep his spot, and Josefsky moves to the bench, for example, because he's not a very good player. Let's be honest. Um, so no, I don't think Bunty's a good option if you if you think about him. O'Sullivan, good pick up at three nineteen. This is from Fano. Or he better invest more money into getting Nicarima or another half around his price. I've got Cleary, Reynolds, and Schuster. If you have Cleary, Reynolds, and Schuster, I would not get O'Sullivan. I just think you you're probably putting a little bit too too much money or too many having too many players in the half position. I had I made this mistake at the start of the year with having too many hookers at the start, but. For I think O'Sullivan will go pretty well, but you can wait a week on him with his break even at 25, for example. Um, with Nicarima, I yeah, I could see him doing pretty well. I can see him averaging close to 50, but he's already priced pretty high. Um, and around that price point, there's only really Chad Townsend, but he has a you know a six a six or so week window of of being able to score well. Um, yeah, because he's trying to cover himself in case in case Cleary and Reynolds drop out. Ah, uh, okay, that's true. He's got both of them who might not play. Um, do you have Avarillo? Do you have Lockie Croker? They're the types of guys that you might want to just cover for the week, but you'd expect one of them to play, surely, Cleary or Reynolds, and you only need one this weekend. I think if you if both of them are out, then you can probably bring O'Sullivan in. You know, after all that rant, and then I say you can probably bring him in, but... Um, yeah, just just wait, wait. You obviously can tell what's going to happen with um, Cleary in that first game, and you might hear from Reynolds a little bit earlier. So just look out for the late mail and see how see how that goes there. Curtis Graham asks, can Clemmer become a gun? Clemmer can become a gun. He's always been just below that that top tier. Last year he improved and became one of those guys, and I think he can do the same again this year. So if you want that consistent scorer, then Clemmer can be one of those guys. Okay, Owen, Owen Foley just. Straight out goes, this has probably already been asked, but hold Lamb or get rid of. He's not someone that you need to get rid of right now, but I think you can use him as someone to downgrade or upgrade upgrade in the half position or just bring in another cash cow. So definitely not, doesn't have to be a trade out, but he's not someone that's going to make a lot of money or be a keeper, so you can trade him out at some point. Uh, Dime asks, is Croker to shoot still a good trade or is there still money to be made on Croker? A crappy uh, emergency is too cheap to straight trade and everyone else higher up has too much upside. So you can do it. Croker, I only think, has upside, uh, has some money-making potential for the next couple of weeks. He has to, if he does, if he scores really well this week, he's got some money to make. If he doesn't score that well, then it kind of stops and his break-even pops back up into the, you know, the, in the mid-20s, for example. Schuster will make more cash than Croker. So if you are only making one trade this week, I'm okay with you doing that one, but just know that the Croker will make a little bit more cash. Time traveling reporter with Deirdre and training at Hooker a little bit. Could that be bad news for Turpin in the future? Yeah, I think so. I think it could be bad news in the future, but I, until he actually gets picked, then then I think you got to keep Turpin. He could you know score you really score for you really well over the next few weeks, and if things don't work out and he doesn't become a keeper, then that's fine. You just move him on. He's in the mid five hundreds. There's a lot of guys you can downgrade to or upgrade with. With Turpin, you know, one of their 
cash cows could ripen over the next few weeks and you can trade you know those two guys accordingly up and down so uh what else we got curtis graham again is it worth swapping joey manu for momorowski and spending the cash elsewhere no 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 no, no. manu is a keeper in the centers don't trade manu momorowski has had a couple of good games but he could easily get 25 this week so don't do that uh, i got a question of schuster or o'sullivan um for me it's schuster he's the one that's been touted to be to do big things they uh the worries also have paul turner who's a chance of coming into the to the team at some point but i don't see that happening at this stage just for the fact that o'sullivan's more of an organizing halfback nicarima's not and turner isn't either so um i think schuster is just the better option uh, what else we got Troy to Aussie, Turpin, Tino, Simonson, Avo to Schuster. Got 88k in the bank. Only one trade this week or none. I think I'll get rid of Simonson. Yep, do it. Done. Simonson's your man. Um, Boonga boy, Lamb for Schuster. Yeah, I'm fine with it. What else we got? Uh, thoughts. CJ, thoughts on Corey Allen and who should I trade him for? Who should you trade him for? All right. We have some really cheap options if you have some cover in the wing fullbacks then then go for uh someone like an alvaro or schuster or sullivan someone like that if you uh well, you know you got Liniu, who else we got down there that's probably it we took a manu if you haven't got him he's going to make a little bit of cash he might get up to 350 or 400 eventually if he keeps averaging in the 30s if you need someone a wing fullback then I think you need to upgrade. You need to make sure you have Laurie. I'd imagine you have Laurie. So Laurie Allen. Do you have someone like, you know, an RTS could be a cool option. You know, Brimson a little bit cheaper, but I'd probably wait to see how he goes. I'd try and upgrade there if you can. I wouldn't bring someone in around that cheaper price. Otherwise, you'll keep playing that wing fullback roulette. Um, what else we got? Hyper Tyranator. Hey, Jamie. Can we get a sort of rough idea on how many trains we trades we should have pre buy period slash post buy both post buy period, etc. So we get 30, 30, 34 to start the year. If we get to around thirteen, that's halfway. You'd want to at least have, you know, if we if we're going two trades a week until round for twelve rounds, that's twenty four, which would leave you with ten. You'd want to have at least eighteen by that stage. So that'll be banking eight trades over the first 12 rounds. So that's what, two every week? Uh, and then, sorry, two every week for four weeks and one every week for eight, which I think is pretty hard to do. I think a lot of people struggle struggle with that. But if you have 18 sort of pre-buy pre rounds and then you can have, you know, if you happen to use three or four over that first period, let's say you use the four, you got 14, you use one let's say you use two over the next few weeks leave you with 12 and then you lose you know even 12 so let's say we use three of them we make it 11 and then you use four again in in three to four in round 17 to give you a sort of eight to seven left and then use another two to three in that first round after round 17 when you're trying to you know reinforce that team and get some of the guns in you've got like five left maybe two more trades to get some more guns in um, and shore up that 17 and then you'll leave yourself two to three trades for injuries in the last sort of four to five weeks i think is okay if you've got like a strong 17 and 18th man that would average in the 40s and then a few kind of you know non-playing guys that you know a few cheapies in there i think that will serve you pretty well but i think you need to bank yeah what what's that eight have eight weeks with only one trade in the first 12 i think would be important so that's something you know, the, the changes for everyone, and obviously it depends on your team. If you're having a struggling start, you know, this, this people's team won't have to trade the, as much because they're doing pretty well. But some other teams have made a bunch of mistakes. And I say use those trades early. Try and hold some maybe between five, six, seven, eight. You know, unless a, a superstar cash cow comes up or you need to, you know, re recover something for an injury. But other than that, I'd try and leave it. Hands of the God. Hey, Jamie, in the event that Cleary doesn't play this week, could you give us some options on who to captain for this week? Crichton's going to be a great option. A lot of people talk about Braley. I think I think he's due for a 50 or 55, so I probably wouldn't want to captain him if that's the case, but he's going to get 80 minutes and should be safe, like he should be a safe captain. Fafita's a great option. Um, if you have anyone like Cook's going to be good, Cherry Evans, 
Marnie, if, you're, if you've got him. Toe Harris is probably your safest option. I think he's going to get 60. Ben Hunt will be decent. You could probably go for Zell. McCulloch's safe. There's no, you know, Teddy people take, speak about, but he's a chance of getting, you know, he's a chance of getting 35 or he's a chance of getting 80. Um, they are kind of guys you want to be thinking about in terms of your captaincy. Tino and Brimson are trade or hold. I've spoken about Brimson being a hold. Tino, you can trade, but you can can, can keep him another week because he's also a chance of getting a 60 or 70. I think they play the Cowboys, so you could go through them. Uh, Danny91, what are your thoughts on Tino to call him a tonguey and Saab to Schuster purely for a cash grab? I think trading out Saab to Schuster is, is a good one. Tino to call him a tonguey, I don't know who has more upside. Like, call him a tonguey could... Could average 40, Tino could average 50. Tino could average 40 as well. So I feel like it's a trade to get, you know, you're saving, what, 100K or so, but, you know, Tino could, could come out and do really well also. So Colin Matangi, I'm not too high on at this stage, but he's someone that you that you could bring in. Um, but that second trade's really strong. Um, you know, what's his logic that with Tino looking at high Bs for the next couple of weeks and Colo potentially sewing up an 80 minute gig? A big swing in cash to be made. Yeah, a little bit of cash to be made, but you know, if if Colin Matangi gets a thirty-five, then a lot of his cash making ability is has, has it is stopped. Um, yeah, you can do it, but it's not a trade that I'd be looking at this week. Although a lot of people would. Um, what else we got? I'm looking to trade out from Surf Beach. I'm looking to trade out Madison and have Edge Cover. Is Townsend worth a trade, or should I go straight to DC? Given he's dropped a bit, already have Cleary. DC is a man. He's second highest averaging halfback, and I think he'll, you know, pretty much go go there again. He'll be about around a sixty point average. I think you can go straight to him. You've got guys like Moses, you can go to. You've got Fogarty. You've got Kiri. There's so many guys you can go to, uh, and you might not have to spend as much money. But DC is going to be a great option. No issues there. Uh, ben Hunt's there. You know, there's a bunch of guys. Um, I'd probably rather you do that than go to Townsend, just because you're going to have to trade Townsend out in sort of six to eight weeks. Is Pawasa Farmasuli a cash cow? Oh, sorry, is he a trade out? If so, who are some good replacement options? This is from Tony679. Guys like Alvaro, guys like Schuster, guys like O'Sullivan, guys like Liniu are all going to be solid options. Utokamanu, um, yeah, I think you can hold him another week or two, but you can also trade him out because he's not going to make too much cash if he's getting that same role, and I don't see much changing with that dragon side. Um, what else we got? From John's there. Thoughts on Brandon Smith to Mitch Barnett and Tino to Alvaro. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Mitch Barnett could be a keeper, but Brandon Smith could also come out and get 60 or 70 this week. I feel like they're trades that don't have to be made. You could you could always you know get away with Smith and Tino as well. So yeah, don't go too crazy on that one. Um question from Argy, Davey for Fui or Alvaro. Personally, think Alvaro is safer, but Fui seems to be doing a decent job, and he's got the edge and the mid cover. So, toss the coin. That one is Lamb a hold. Yeah, he can be, or you can use him to upgrade or downgrade. Who's more of a keeper, Tino or Takiyaho? Definitely Takiyaho, I think. You know, he's someone that's that's shown that he can average at fifty or just above each year, and as a chance for some upside if he gets some more minutes. But, um, Nathan looking to crack the thousand mark. Thoughts on Turpin to Jay Bradley and Brooks to Papali'i. Hey, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Brooks is averaging over 50 and making money. Papali'i could average 45 on the edge. Um, Turpin to Braley. I think you need Braley in, but Turpin's maybe not the guy. But if you have to, then you can you can trade Turpin to Braley. But the other one I don't like. Um, what else we got? Okay, B Morgs, this will be interesting. I'm sure the others will be in the same boat, Jamie, but I've never gotten my head around rolling break evens and how to fully take advantage of the concept. Any chance you can give me a simplified explanation and an example? Uh, I wouldn't be worrying too much about your rolling break even. It's it's based off a five round average. So pretty simple. If a guy is playing really well then and scoring really well, then he's going to be making money really quickly. Right? As soon as a Let's just say someone's uh, priced at 30. If they pick up a 70, their break even drops massive, right? That next week, they they only have to score, you know, their break even might go down to like a, a zero. 
there's a there's a formula for it you know based on your price per point but we don't need to get into that um yeah their break even is going to be zero and then you know if they score a 30 or 40 they're going to make a lot of money but if they score a 30 their break even pops up you know a fair bit higher and then they're going to have to score a bigger next week right so it's not, it doesn't really matter because it's best based on your on the average you know if you scored two 70s in a row um, you're going to make a fair bit of cash over those first two weeks but then the third week if you get 10 even if you break even to neg negative three or something like that you're going to only make a little bit of money and that brings your average from 70 then down to around that what 50 mark what it is yeah, 45 40. um yeah so that's that's the general gist with with break evens only only really look at them for you know if you like okay this guy's going to make cash and going to average a certain amount for a bunch of weeks then then great then bring him in there's also the other way if you're looking to bring in a guy that hasn't gone as well if you're looking at someone like brimson he's got a pretty high break even right you could wait a week or two for him to for his price to drop and get and his break even to drop also before you bring him in and you know because if you bring him in and, and his break even 70 if he's, even if he scores 60 he's going to lose a little bit of cash so you can wait a week on someone like that um but yeah that's that's all to really mention on that one if you've got any further questions let me know but i wouldn't uh you know pay, pay too much into that pierce asked me will i ever become good at fantasy there's always a chance there's always a chance pierce Someone asked him, what's your ranking? He feels personally attacked. Um, is Colo worth picking up? Yeah, we spoke about him a little bit. What else we got? All right. Yeah, Surf Beach asked, hey, just wondering how your thoughts on Townsend. Missed the boat at the start and should have at least 100k in price rises but didn't get him. Yeah, unfortunately, um, that's the case with a bunch of us. We all pick Lamb, a bunch of us pick Lamb over him. I think he's going to do really well over the next six weeks, but probably not average in the mid 50s, you know, somewhere in the high 40s to 45, but then uh, needs to be traded in sort of six to seven weeks there. So I would, it's a hard one. You can bring him in if you really need some half cover, but if not, I'd probably leave him out of it. Uh, that's probably going to be it, I think. Might leave it at that. It's getting pretty long, but um, there you go, guys. That's the, uh, the Q&A for the week. If you've got any further questions, please hit, hit me up in the Discord or send me a, a DM on Facebook, but um, the Discord, Discord's much easier. If we can have it all in the one place, that would be great. But there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. See you, guys.